Welcome to a short class on advanced use of the place text module. Now we're going to start off with an application called Three Layer Stratigraphy 7 Material Lithology FD Place Text EFB.EVS. Now that application should be available in the 2020 release of Studio Projects. Otherwise, you'll find a link to download this file in the EFB and other files that it reads. This file already has a place text module, and I want to show you what place text can do, and then we're going to delete that module and start from scratch and build something very similar to what you're seeing now. Place text now has the ability to place text at any orientation in three-dimensional space. That's a new feature, and it uh, allows you to place text objects on the surface of, of various objects regardless of their orientation. Now this looks like a rectangular model and therefore we should be simple to just apply these labels on the orthogonal planes, but when we go to a top view we'll find that this rectangular grid is not parallel to the coordinate axes and therefore placing these labels directly on the surfaces looking like they're embossed there requires the ability to, to arbitrarily align individual text elements. So we'll start off by taking a good look at this and then we'll move on and build this from scratch. So again I'm going to delete this play text, place text module so that you can see that we're going to start from, from scratch with nothing and we hit P and it'll bring up place text as the third module in the list and we'll hook it up the way it was before with one exception. We're going to hook it up to the viewer which is how it was connected before. We also need to hook up the purple port to the viewer um, and I clicked the wrong spot. There's the purple port to the viewer which will allow us to probe and place text objects based on our probing. Now as I said before, as you can see again when I go to a top view, that this model is not aligned to the coordinate axes. And in this application, because I'm using Creek 3D Geology to allow us to explode the PGF file, we can open up Creek 3D Geology and find out that this grid was rotated 60 degrees. So from the x-axis, we know that this face is rotated 60 and this face is rotated 30. And so when we want, if we want to place text objects directly on these faces, we can do so by, by knowing what compass heading is going to give us precise perpendicular. Now we could always just come in here and eyeball it, you know, I'm going to eyeball it like this and realize that, you know, I'm pretty close. But if we go to the viewer for a second, we'll see that my pretty close was actually dialed in exactly at 120 degrees, which is where we want to be, 30 degrees off of 90 or 60 degrees off 180. If I had been off a tiny bit like this, you can see that this azimuth is, is not exactly 120 and we'll just set it back to be perfect. Now similarly we want the inclination to be zero and, and when I dialed this in my inclination was not zero. So we just touch the zero key and not obvious that this is perfect because you see so much of the bottom before I was trying to minim you know to balance between seeing the top and bottom surfaces, but this is the inclination that we really want. So now with this inclination we can start the process and we do so to make sure that we're ready to probe new objects. We have to go to the place text module and set a probe action and the probe action we want right now is to add text. So let's go ahead and place the first label for the word clay, which is this layer, you can see the color here, right in the middle of this clay lens. Now we also have clay down in this lower corner, so we could put clay here and clay there if we wanted to, but we're going to put it on the primary layer that it's in. I want to talk about this application for just one second. This application is a combination of both stratigraphic and lithologic modeling. So there are three stratigraphic layers within which there are seven lithologic materials. So we're going to label the materials, not the layers. Okay, so to go back to the view that we have, 
uh, we're going to want to uh, set our view at 120 and doing that up here precisely is challenging. We'll go back again to to the viewer as L. And the easiest, nicest one to get to is in application properties. And we'll set the azimuth to 120, not 20, sorry. And the inclination to zero. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so back to place text. And we're gonna, we've got this set to add text. And so all we do is choose where we want to place this. And we're going to say, okay, I want it about there. And I hold down the control key and I click one time. Now, my viewer is set to auto scale when I add new objects. So I'm going to go into the viewer here. So here it is right here, auto fit the scene on any change. And we want to set that to be never. Now we could set it to a significant change, which probably is not going to occur because a significant change means a change where the extents vary by about 20% more than what they were before. But never is going to mean that, that it isn't going to be affected at all. So we go back here. And we'll see that that text string that we placed and the default string it happened to be CTEC C -tech technology, that, that text string we placed is really far from the orientation we want. So what happened here? And I'll go back and explain that. But let's, let's first reset our, our azimuth to 120, our inclination to zero, and then go back to the place text module and take a look. Now, what we did is, is place text has default settings for a text. And if we tell it that we want to get a text orientation copied from the viewer, then boom, it's going to place that text string perpendicular to our current line of sight. And that's what we want. So that what we wanted to have labeled there was the word clay. And I think I want to change it to be a gray color. And that's pretty close. It's bigger than we really want. Because remember, we're going to have other labels like the word sandstone sitting right here in that little sliver of green. So we need to make it smaller. And that's going to be under the size here. And I'm going to say, we'll try, we'll see what looks like, what, what half of that looks like. And that looks pretty reasonable to me. It's easy to go back later and change all of these, so we, so we can do that. Now, we could say we're done, um, but we also want to uh, make sure that we have extruded, which we do, and decide whether we, not, we want bold or not bold, or whether we want a different font. And I'm going to choose uh, a different font, and if you don't have the latest version of our software, 2020 version of our software yet, um, you may not have that font. But, so the font that I'm going to choose is called JetBrains. Now, that may sound pretty strange, but uh, come down here, they're alphabetical, H-I-J-J, -J, and there it is. And JetBrains is a, is a monospace font, meaning that words will all have the same spacing, and it's extremely legible even when it's small. So it's a great choice for small text. Now the last thing we want to take a look at, I want you to be aware of, is that when I click on a surface, it gives us the coordinates on the surface. And so there's very little of this sticking out from, from our surface. But because we have some extrusion, it is. Now often, I want to actually move the point away from the surface. And if I need to do that, I need to get a sense of what the coordinates are. And if we go back to a top view, you can see that to move it away, I could just increase the X coordinate and that would pull it away. Z is not going to do it because that would be in and out of our screen. And Y is not going to have as big an effect because of the angle. So again, if we go back to the view that we had, which was 120 and 0 for inclination. And we go back and look at the place text. We're going to have the coordinates that we probe. And, and all I need to do is just increase the X a little bit. So I'm going to put it instead of 522 and a half, I'm going to put it at 526. Now that shifted it slightly in X, but it also shifted it, uh, shifted it towards our eye. And we'll be able to see that again better when we, when we rotate this view. And you can see how much more of it is sticking out. And actually, it's sticking out more than the surface 
it's, it's actually hovering away from the surface. So if we don't like that, and I don't really, we can maybe go back and just do a very subtle change. 522, or make that 3. And now you can see it's sticking slightly into the surface. It was at 20, 522 and a half before. We could try 4. And and that that looks pretty good to me. So it's, you know, we, we came out about 1.5 in X. And that's giving it a nice um, distance away from the surface, extruded out. And so we'll remember that we'll just add one and a half to the x coordinates for anything we probe on the surface. Now there's no way to probe a point in space unless there's an object there. So we can't pick a point that we want to be one and a half units away from the surface. That just there's just nothing logical about there's it's open void space. There's nothing to pick. So again, uh, this is the approach if you want to have that see more of the extruded word, this is the approach you take. So again, we'll go back to 120. Um, and there isn't a, a mark here. I guess these marks are every 45, so we don't have marks at every 30. So we go 120 and 0 again. And now we're back to looking at our surface. And we can scroll over. And we're ready to add another word. So. Um, from now on, uh, when we choose another point, it's going to inherit the last settings. And so it will inherit, this, inherit the size, the font, everything else that we've done. So now all we need to do is go and add another text string. So let's put topsoil up here in the purple section. So I probe. And we get the word clay. But I can see that it's not really where I want it. I want it higher. So I'm going to switch the probe action to be reset. And I move it and make it higher. And change the word to be topsoil. So we can see how it fits. And I like that, but I think I maybe want it just a little bit higher. And when I move it in X, it's going to shift a little bit to the right also. But I still want to move it a little bit to the right. And that looks good. So now I'm going to add one and a half roughly to the x coordinate. So that's going to take 6.7 to be 8.2. And you saw a little shift in x if you were watching. And just so you can see how good this looks, we, we come down here and you can see it's extruded out from the surface as the other one is by the same amount. Looks very nice. So we've already added two strings. And we'll go ahead and we'll finish these up. So I'm going to, again, go back to our view. Uh, where We're going to add the other strings. And this time, I'm not going to stop and look at them all in between. And so the other one we want to put is uh, silty clay in the middle of this green layer. So again, we can go to Place Text, make sure it's set to Add Text. And we click one time. And we can change this to be silty clay. And then add one and a half. So one and a half is going to take us to 490. And I'm not worried about being exact on this. And we're done with that one. And then we need the word sandstone on this little sliver of dark green. But I'm probably going to want that to be a smaller font. So I'm going to go ahead and do shale on the blue first. And since it's up here and down here, we can put one shale in or two shales in. We'll put in one right now. And I'm going to change the name, shale. And let's reset that position a little bit. I'm going to move it up over here. And let's add one more shale. But before we do, let's, let's change the x coordinate again. We'll add uh, one and a half roughly. So that's close to 60. And uh, now we'll go ahead and, and add another shale on this little blue spot. And now I want to reset position because I want to move it up. And remember you have to probe where you kind of want the center it to be. And, and that is affected by some of the other settings like horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. So if I choose the center for the alignment, we might see the probing make a little more sense. I think we're still on reset size. And now we're kind of at the bottom of the string. So it's a little, little tougher to probe there. 
Um, and so I think I'm going to want to say, let's put the alignment at the top, see how that looks. That's a little easier to do. Now, on this one, again, because it's going to shift to the right when I add one and a half, I also might want to make it a little smaller. But let's, let's uh, change the coordinates first. So again, x coordinate is two and a half, so it goes to four. And I am going to make this just a little smaller, eight instead of 10. And now we can say, well, I can move it a little bit and we can just move it. Uh, but if we, if we move it with coordinates, because it's not parallel, it's going to be a tough thing to choose. So we're still in the reset position and we'll, we'll move it by probing and we'll um, change its x coordinate one more time again. And because we probed, it's not in the same x it was before. So we want to make this uh, 4.8. That lifts it off. And then last, we want to add sandstone. So we'll do add text here, put sandstone. Whoops. So when you add that second one, which I did, I added shale, uh, I've got two shales there. So now there's three or four shales, one, two, three, four shales. So usually the one selected here is the last one you did. And you can just hit remove current text. And that's what we want. And then we'll do, uh, we don't have to remove that one. We'll do reset position and we'll change this to be sandstone. All right, and remember, it's going to inherit the size of the last one, which was we reduced to eight. So now we just need to reset its position and make it a little bit higher. And we'll just add the one and a half to the X so it's extruded. So that'll be 3.6. And we're there. So that's all of the labels we had on the last one. Okay, so I realized that the last one had sandstone here, but this blue layer down here is really the sandstone. So we want to choose their sandstone layer and still reset its position and move it down here. All right, and uh, I still want to move it a little bit higher. Not quite that much. All right, and then again, change its X coordinate again one time, and that's going to put us at 81. So that's really the sandstone layer. And there is a siltstone layer right here. So we can go ahead and, and put that in while we're doing this. It'd be a little better than the application we started with. So we'll click on this and put this in a siltstone and change the text. And maybe raise it up a little bit. Now the one coordinate we can do just by with numbers is the Z. That should be easy enough. So let's just see what moving it up by two does. And that's too much. We'll move it up by half that amount. We'll go to one, excuse me, four. And that looks pretty good. And now we'll just increase the X by the one and a half. And that's going to take us to two and a half. All right, so now let's rotate this and take a look at all of our examples. And you can see they all look pretty darn good. Okay, now the other model had a couple labels on this side. And to do that, we would only need it to rotate our view to be 90 degrees different than the other view because this was a rectangular model. So that's going to be 120 plus 90, which is 210. And just to show you what that's going to look like, we'll go back here and you can see we're close to 210, but we weren't exactly there. 210 and 0 again. And so now we're ready to probe on this face. Now the first time we probe on this face, we're not going to get what we want precisely, but I'm going to go back to place text. 
and we're on add text and I'm going to put another siltstone label right here but you don't see it it's sticking out because it's parallel it inherited the last settings but now we just go down here and say copy from viewer and it turns us for it and now we are going to want to move this out similarly to what we did in X but now we need to go to a lower Y so we're going to reduce by one and a half in Y and that's roughly 14 and now we can rotate and see that that string looks fabulous so it'd be very easy for us to go in and add there's one more over here for fill and uh, I'm not going to even bother to do that right now I'll leave that for you to do but what I do want to show you is, is what else we can do and we're going to go and save this file so we're going to save this and it is a place text file and I'm going to just for now save it to my desktop so I'm going to say um, pt class dot pt and I'm going to open this file up in a text editor you can see there's a couple things that have happened in my file that I don't like and that is that my very first string clay didn't was just one line and these others are two lines because I've got this slash n in the file so I'm going to delete these these slash n's in all of my strings and um, there were two after that one and there's two after this next one also so we ended up with a lot of extra lines and there's three after this one now having multiple lines could change the z position so we might need to clean up our Z positions once we do that. So I'm going to do this first. And this might happen to you. It's happened to us, you can see. I'm going to save this file again. And I'm going to go in and import the file. And when I do that, we're fortunate that uh, we had chosen a text um, or a vertical alignment that that put us using the top of the first string and so none of our strings moved when we did that so that part's great okay so we're ready to go back to our our file here and the next thing we want to look at is the explode IDs now I didn't talk about that before so let's let's go take a look at where that is and it's right here and you can see that I left it zero on all of our strings. So if I if I go in here and look at all the strings, they all have the same explode ID. Now what does explode ID mean? Well, when we explode stratigraphic layers, and we have three here, if the explode ID is zero, it means that this these text strings with a zero explode ID are associated with the uppermost layer, the zero layer. And therefore as I explode, they don't move. But these four strings, both siltstone, silty clay, and shale, should have an explode ID of one. So if we go, and, this, and these two should have an explode ID of two. So if I change the explode distance to be zero, you'll notice that the model updates and these strings, the first two strings stay where they are, but the other ones move. Well, they actually don't move they stay where they were in three-dimensional space but the layers compress together so they're all too low they're all somewhere where we don't want them so we're going to just fix their explode IDs and you'll see that it'll correct this so we go back here so if we go through this file because it doesn't write out a header for you we'll see that the first word is the word font and it's telling us the font size is 10 it is left-centered justification. It has 120 degree azimuth and a zero inclination. And this zero, this zero that follows the uh, inclination is the roll, something we rarely use, but you can. And then the next three colors, the next three line, uh, numbers are colors, RGB color. And so since they're all the same, you get a shade of gray. Now these are all font specifiers and and then the second line has the XYZ coordinates 
and the explode ID. So for topsoil and clay, we want an explode ID of zero. And then when we get down to silty clay, we want an explode ID of one. Now my editor highlights everything that has a zero when I do that. And we also want um, siltstone to be a one. And we want sandstone to be a one. Actually, we want all of the siltstones to be one. And then in this, what we've got so far, I think we want shale to be two. And there's two shales. And one is big and one is small. Let's go back here and take a look here. So the big one's two and the small one is one. So we need to look and see. We've got some fonts that eight. We have a shale that is font eight. And so that's our small one, and that's going to be a one. And then we've got our other font that is 10, and we want that to be a two. So let's load this file and see if, if we made it better or made it worse. Now, real, take a look here that this says import. It doesn't say open. And there's a reason why we use that language. When you save your application, you'll notice that this will be gone. I'm going to open this again and reread the same file. Or actually, we can just use the reload import file button and update it. So I've clicked the reload import file button and nothing moves. Why is that? Well, for starters, the explode distance is zero. And so changing the explode IDs makes no difference when the explode distance is zero because the distance determines how far they moved. And we position them in the wrong place because we position them on an exploded model. So that was a mistake, an intentional one on my part, because I want you to know how to fix this. So we know that we have a Z scale of five and an explode distance of zero. We had built this on an explode model that was ex exploded by two. So just to see what we want here, I'm going to take a look at this silty clay. There's only one of those. And do we, we need to move it up, obviously. And so it was um, higher because the layer was moved down by two. So it was higher relative to the layer. This layer that it's on is the one layer would have moved down by two. So I'm going to just try raising this exactly two and see if that does what we want. And it does. It's a good job. So now we need to change the coordinates of, of all of these based on their explode ID. The ones that are at explode ID one need to move up by two. And the ones that are down here at the bottom need to move up by four. So we can either do that manually or we can do that in the file. So we're going to go back and do it in the file. And, and so if it's got an explode ID of 1, we're going to change the Z coordinates by 2. So we're going to make this 20. And explode ID of 2, we're going to change the Z coordinates by 4. And these were 0, so they don't need to change. And this one is a 1, so we change it by 2. This one's a 1, so we change it by 2. Again, a 1, so we change it by 2. And the last one, we change it by 2. So if we save this and reload this file, now things look like they're in a better position. Sandstone, the small sandstone, looks like it probably has the wrong explode ID. And we can check that because there's only one sandstone. So when we click on sandstone, sandstone should have been uh, explode ID 2. So let's go back and see if, if it was set correctly to be 2. Sandstone, ah, it was set to be 1. So we only raised it by 2. It should have an explode ID of 2 and it should be at 13. So we'll save this again and we'll reload the file. 
and you can see sandstone move down. But now the proof, if we set a higher explode ID, like 5, we want to see all the strings stay where they're supposed to be relative to their layer, and they have. So, to review the things that you've learned, once you set your orientation, you can copy that from the viewer so that you don't have to figure out exactly what it needs to be. You may want to change your coordinates to offset your strings more significantly from the surface you probed on. If we wanted to put a label on the top of the model, we could easily do that. So that top of the model here is sandstone, topsoil, excuse me. So I go to a top view, and if I want to have a rotated view, I probably want this model to be rotated to where it's about 120. So my string was, was but you could choose what orientation you want. I mean, you, you may want it rotated at some odd angle. So I want to put it right here, but how do I get perpendicular to that surface. Well, that surface is relatively flat, but instead let's let's try to lay it on the surface of this hillside here a little bit. So I'm going to rotate to where I think it's normal and I'm going to go back and probe, put this on add text, and I'm going to probe a point and I'm going to copy from the viewer and it's stuck inside the surface. Now we want to change it to be topsoil and we want to raise its z-coordinate so that it stands out. So I'm just going to raise its z-coordinate to be 7. Let's see what that little bit does. And that was enough. Now you can see that is more sloped than the topography was. And so that parameter is the inclination here. And we can move it in real time. It, it actually jumped on me, but it was, it was a lower value and I'm gonna try to move it in real time, give it just a little bit of slope. And, and we also don't need to raise it so much because we these coordinates have that Z scale built into them. So I'm going to make it a little flatter and then drop it to be 6.5. There we go, that's better. Make it a little bit higher, 6.7. And it could be a, a lesser angle, we'll make it 88 instead of 85. That makes it flatter. So let's see what it looks like. And you can see, you know, I can place an or a label at any orientation. It might take a little bit of work, but we got there. Okay, so I could save this file, but when I save the application, it's gonna save all of the strings that we've added, all the text that we've added, and its coordinates and explode ideas and fonts and everything else about it. So you don't need to save it when you're done unless you just want to have a backup of it, just in case. And so that would, that would be your answer. So clearly, you know, if we want to be able to tell what materials are on the surface when we're in a top view, you might want to label the yellow and the beige materials, the clay and the fill also, because those are the only three materials that are visible on the top. Now, we could put materials on the tops of these other surfaces. And, uh, and we, again, we want to make sure that topsoil has an explode ID of zero. So the other thing that I want to point out that you, that you need to have learned is that it's better to place your, your text with the model unexploded and set your explode IDs as you go so you don't have to go back and figure them out after the fact. All right, well, I hope this is helpful and that you'll be able to use this to do much better annotated 3D models. Thank you.